Welcome everyone, my name is Lana Berry and I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Chandler Unified School District. I did want to share a couple reasons that Chandler Unified School District decided to pick a crowdfunding platform and a few things I think you would think were valuable as you start your journey in deciding what platform to use or just as you're investigating what uh, PTOs, boosters, or your schools are doing in this arena. We've had a lot of challenges here in Chandler and we're working through the processes as we speak. A few years ago, we decided to look into the different crowdfunding fundraisers that were taking place on our campuses. We have 45,000 different uh, students who come to Chandler Unified at 45 different schools. And what we found really quickly was we had different crowdfunding fundraisers taking place at different schools and we actually didn't know about them. We didn't know how they were approved. We didn't know where the money was going. We didn't know if they met um, state laws, federal laws. We didn't know if they followed our processes. And so we started to take a dive into what's going on at our school district and what has our name on it. So one of the first things I challenge you to do, if you haven't already, is to study the different crowdfunding fundraisers that are taking place at your school district um, with your boosters, your PTOs, and your school sites. Uh, we found out really quickly we had uh, different fundraisers from Donors Choose, which is typically where teachers have signed up um, through Donors Choose and are collecting money typically for technology items, supplies, maybe going on a trip. Uh, they have to be a teacher and they have to be proved through a system, but a problem we found very quickly was who owns that technology, who owns whatever um, they're purchasing in the end. We also found that if we didn't meet our goal in some of those software systems, like Donors Choose, that our school district did not receive the money that our families and stakeholders contributed. We also found out really quickly that district boosters and PTO organizations were doing different fundraisers through GoFundMe or SnapRaise. Some of them were paying high fees and parents were questioning that. We also found really quickly that our name was being published, meaning Chandler Unified School District's name, even though the district had not approved those fundraisers. So very quickly, we decided to start looking into how can we fix this. And are we perfect? No, that we've made a lot of progress. And that's one thing I encourage you to do is you don't need everything in place to start. You just need to get going. And with progress, you'll figure out where your problems are, but you'll also be able to address them at the same time. So one of the things we did here in Chandler was we did a request for proposals and we looked at different platforms to meet our district's needs. We have 150 different boosters here in Chandler Unified and with 45 schools and 150 different boosters slash parent teacher organizations, we needed a platform that met all of our needs. We needed to be able to know where the money was going. That was a big deal for us. We needed to be able to approve and know that what people were fundraising for met our expectations. And a good example of that is if, if a school wanted to raise money for supplies for the classroom, but the district was typically going to pay for those items, we did not want them to fundraise for that. Or if you have what we have here in Arizona, a bond or an override, maybe there was items that we want to cover, which in our bond or our override, which is voter approved, that maybe they wanted to fundraise for. And politically, that would not be something we would want out there. We also knew that sometimes we'd have teachers who would fundraise for something that they ne we needed to provide for. For example, a special education child. A teacher might be putting out there that she wanted to buy or he wanted to buy specific items for a special needs child that is actually part of their IEP, and the district should be funding those. So that's why you need an approval process in place. So I encourage you to work through that process to understand what the approval process is so that you can move forward in your district. I also encourage you to work with your attorney on it. We've worked with our attorney. We've also worked with experts uh, throughout the industry um, that are accounting experts that come in and help school districts. And we've also met with the um, Auditor General's Office to get their guidance on fraud and some other things. So work together as groups. That's one thing that I think is phenomenal is that Gary and his team have created a network group where we can share information. I hate, I hate to recreate the will, and Gary does a phenomenal job of bringing us together and allowing us to share information. Austin Independent School District, Chandler, other school districts across the nation are going to be able to share information so that we don't have to recreate the will, but we might be able to take each other's ideas, frequently ask questions, forms, and put them together. So no matter where you're at in this process, if you've already started and you've looked at what you're going to do and you're choosing a platform, or if you haven't even started at all, Take the small steps, make progress, but start no matter what. It's not perfect, but it's progress. And I encourage you to pick a platform that meets all of your district stakeholders' needs and get going.